Uh, what I did was uh, I went to his book and I said, okay, what do these words mean? Let's, let's look them up. And the first thing I do uh, in his case is I look up the word count because then you can get a, a ballpark figure of what his favorite words are, how he's going to use them, okay? And here's his uh, famous uh, word count, okay? Mass, that word belongs to the establishment. It's a, it's a pr private property of the establishment. So no dissident talks too much about mass. They would rather talk about all these other concepts. And uh, energy, because it's another form of mass, uh, he, he doesn't emphasize that too much. He does talk a little bit about inertia. But as you can see by the number, he uses an incommensurable vortex and conjugate. He uses these fancy words that have no meaning, and they're not defined in his book. Uh, but um, you can see at the bottom, dielectric and derivatives, you know, dielectricity and so on. Oh, he loves that word. He's got it 1,600 times in there. Field, he's got half of that. And then ether, he's got 380, and counterspatial, 313. But it turns out counterspatial and ether, in his language, are synonyms. Okay, so he's got 700 there. And it turns out that ether, counterspatial, and dielectric are synonyms in his language. So he's got a total of 1,600 plus 700. He's got a total of 2,400 versions of dielectric, ether, and counterspatial against uh, about 800 fields. So he's got three times as many uh, 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 instances of dielectric, ether, and counterspatial as he does a field. So you can see how he's going to drive his, his theory. And those are the words you have to look up. So the word I look up first is this word counterspatial, okay? And as you can see here, um, you know, he says the ether uh, cannot be in space. He says space is within the ether. And he goes through here, he never defines it. And by the time I got to page 54, I finally gave up. Uh, uh, but it's important to see what he's saying there. Counterspace is literally the space between space itself. And that contrasts against what he said at the beginning. And so I said, well, let's see. Let's see if I can illustrate what uh, good old Ken Wheeler is saying. Maybe we can get to the bottom of this. And so I decided to illustrate it. And here's the illustration. Okay. Uh, he says, the ether is counter space and cannot be in space. Rather, space is within the ether. That's on page 29. That's uh, illustration number one. You can see space is in or within or whatever the ether. Great. Whatever the ether is. Okay, now he says next, he says, counter space is literally the space between space itself. That's number two. Now, ether is between the two spaces. It's no longer that the space is included within the ether. Now, the next one, he says, number three, which re uh, says the ether, right? Uh, which requires conjugate field forces to bring it into space. Now, ether is in or within or into space. So you can see that through the uh, pages, he goes into this contradiction. He doesn't have a slightest, slightest clue what he's saying. Okay, so I look up the other word, this uh, the word dielectric. I'm saying, what is this? And so I go there, and they have he has all these dielectric uh, instances, one of the, again, the most popular word probably in his uh, book. And I finally got to page 18 and finally found some measure of an idea of what dielectric or dielectricity means. He says, is the ether under stress or strain? In other words, he's saying it's the ether under motion of some kind. That's what he's saying. That's a dynamic concept. What is, uh, what is he talking about? Well, he's talking about a jumping kangaroo, which I touched upon in previous uh, videos. A jumping kangaroo is not a physical object. A kangaroo is an object. And this guy does his physics with jumping kangaroos. That's the issue. He's saying dielectricity is a jumping kangaroo. You got to get to the bottom of the ether. Obviously, he, he wants you need to know what a, the ether. Since everything is synonym with, synonymous with ether, you want to know what the ether is. Okay, what is the ether? So I go in there and look up, you know, what the ether is. An ether is a medium. He's got that all over his book. Uh, that's a mediator. That's a medium. Okay, he's got it everywhere. And so it's some kind of medium. In fact, in uh, the previous one, he said it's got a membrane. So I guess that's a medium. So we need to know what a medium is. Well, of course, uh, Gurdjieff Ken doesn't define what a medium is. The ether is also made of particles. He says cathode ray is not electric, but actually corpuscles of the ether. And he talks about the gaseous ether is the seat of electrical phenomena. Okay? So when uh, you get an idea, you say, OK, obviously the ether is made of particles. Uh, is the ether finite or infinite? Well, it's both in his theory. Uh, there is nothing outside the ether. That's on page 28. You would think if there is nothing outside the ether, it would look like that first picture, like the infinite ether. Otherwise, you would have something surrounding the ether. It would be thought, the fourth dimension, or whatever. I don't care what you surround it with, but it would be surrounded by some black stuff in this case. You want to make it red, make it red. Fine. But the issue is that either the ether is infinite or it's finite. And uh, then uh, he's got there, the ether is, is um, brought into space. You see the ether is enclosed within space. And in number three, it's against space. So it's uh, you know hitting against it. Uh, it's surface to surface. 
So you can see again the inconsistency. We have no idea whether the ether is finite or infinite. Now from objectively looking at his uh, book. It turns out the ether also has physical properties. Okay, and here it is. It says uh, ether has pressure. You know, it's com uh, compressibility of the ether. Uh, the ether can be polarized. It has stress and strain, and it can decelerate. And I assume somewhere I'm going to find that the ether also accelerates. So he's got all these, uh, uh, what is it, physical properties of the ether. I got to distinguish these guys, and that's why I attack them. I attack them because Science is not criticism, but I need to criticize these guys so that you can see a contrast. Otherwise, people will say, well, Bill's just another dissident. He, he does the same thing as all these other guys. And a lot of people say, why don't you join the electric universe? Why don't you join, you know, these, these dissidents? And no, these people are my biggest enemies because they are misleading intellectuals, intelligent laymen who rail against the establishment. 